What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. In our last video we got this 1961 Galaxy Z Code 394 barrel car to fire off for the first time since at least 1998. This thing had been stuck in a barn for many many years. Before we go any farther mechanically I think in today's video we detail this thing and see if we can bring life back to this old car. I think first thing obviously to do is take the pressure washer, let's blast this car off, try to get some of this caked on crud off, see if there's any car left when we get done. As satisfying as it was to blast this thing off, we got a lot of that crud and dirt out of there. You can see this paint still shows its age a lot, especially being caked in barn dust and everything as long as it had been, I think, and whew, is really caked in. This is gonna be fun. I think I do want to just really quick, let me clay bar this spot right here. Let's wipe it down before I wet sand anything. Let's go ahead and just try to buff it. You know, the biggest thing with this car is we're not trying to make it perfect, we're trying to preserve it. That's kind of what we're going on here. And so let's see if we can clean this up without going through doing a bunch of wet sanding. I have a feeling there are some spots we have to address doing that. But let's try this tail section right here real quick. I'll just be using the V32 optical grade extreme compound. Now, I'm not putting a ton of pressure and I just want to take my chime, my chime? <laughs> I want to take my time, let the machine, the pad, and the compound do its job. Wow, what an incredible difference this old paint does with just some quick buffing, but I think we can make it even better. It looks great, and I think it really would look nice completely done through the car, but I wanna see if we can make it just a little bit nicer. And so what I'm gonna end up using is we've got our DA here, we've got a foam interface, little patty, 
we're gonna start with a 1500 grit. I don't wanna go down to a thousand. This is 3M clear coat sandpaper. And we'll start with this. I wanna keep it wet, really nice and wet. Let's very gently sand it until we get rid of all the little dimples and we really see a nice smooth dull surface. I wanna to move to a 2000 to clean it up and then we'll finish it off with a 3000 that'll really get 98% of those scuff marks out of there. And then we'll compound it again and let's see the difference. Wow. Hey there. Now is it perfect? No. But is it a mind-blowing difference from here to here? Yes. Wow, it is a complete transformation. I mean, this is complete 360 or 180. 360 is back to the same spot. That didn't make any sense. I guess it'd probably be 180. <laughs> But it makes a huge difference. It's, it's far, far, far from perfect, but it looks really, really, really nice, especially for a paint this age. And you gotta think too, we're working on a car that's not necessarily valuable enough to go through and do a full restoration on. But at the same time, just doing this, it's not a show car necessarily, but it's something you'd be more than happy to daily drive, take local cruise ins, car, you know, the little small car meets and stuff and really enjoy and have fun and talk to people and everything with it and feel proud to drive the thing. So it really does make a big difference just taking a little bit of time, say a little bit of time. This is probably gonna take me the next three days to knock this out, but I think it'll be worth it because this is looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out this top section right here, this entire rear section, and let's see how the whole buttress of this car looks.
With most of the buffing taken care of on the entire car here, I do wanna kinda of go ahead and start moving on and addressing a few other little odds and ends while we have the machine out and take care of a couple other things. And I'm sure you noticed as I went around the car, I hit all of the stainless and pot metal and everything. And what that does is take a lot, take those water stains and those fine scratches out and it does not hurt anything. And it really makes a huge difference as you can see here. And so that's something I wanna kinda of work on towards at the back of the car here. You see how ugly this poor old bumper is. We've got some rust staining and everything. It's actually not a bad, bad bumper. And so we're gonna see if we can kinda of save it a little bit. And I do also wanna take a minute to just say thank you so incredibly much. My wife and I are just getting over COVID. It wasn't terribly terrible. It did kick her butt a little bit and that's kind of why we're kind of been kind of put back. I was kind of in between and stuck on this car and not able to get down here and we're back down here. I did put a post and so many of you had some really nice encouraging comments and I just want to thank you all so much for the love. We really do appreciate it. Now first thing I'll throw on the ground, I'll give a stab here is some of this never dull. And this is for like using in a kitchen on stainless and stuff. But you just take that stuff there it's got some goop on it and uh i guess we just rub it in makes a huge difference a lot of times what i'll use is a very very fine grade steel wool or a copper pad the biggest thing you got to be careful with is scuffs and scratches and this seems to be doing pretty well without getting all those scuffs and scratches in there that we end up inevitably having to get back out and you never can get them all back out that in itself seems to have made it made <laughs> that in itself seems to have made a huge difference now we're going to go ahead and cut it and see if we can get it just a little better a little bit shinier get a little bit more of that rust staining off but go ahead and prepare yourself because you are going to destroy what pad you have left. So make sure you use an older pad. This is one that I quite a bit that I've used quite a few times, but I have cleaned. And let's go ahead and see what this does. Wow, it is far, far from perfect. But the entire car is that way. Quite a bit of pitting and stuff without re-chroming a bumper. It's hard to fix all that. And even when re-chroming a bumper, you have to deal with a lot of this pitting. Can't complain with that though. Now I did miss the part where I never dulled everything, spent about 25 minutes doing that. I did buff the entire top part up here, all of the trim and everything in this lower piece. This is a pretty good looking back end. Now still working at the rear of the car here, I wanna go ahead and spray this panel here, which is an aluminum panel down. Man, the cicadas are crazy. <laughs> With some of this aluminum brightener. This is Napa aluminum brightener. Now what this is gonna do, instead of like, the heck, get out of here, bug. Yeah. What this is gonna do, instead of trying to polish this or anything, this is going to etch that metal, leave it with a nice clean finish, and it's not going to corrode and get kind of gross looking like you do when you try to polish stuff. I don't know what it is about trying to polish it. Once you polish it, or if you use just a degreaser or something, that aluminum will start to, will start to actually kind of corrode and get like little ugly white spots. The nice thing with this aluminum brightener is it cleans it up, it gives it a really nice finish that doesn't do that. So that's why we use this. Let's give it a try. We just spray it on, try not to breathe it in too much. We got pretty decent air movement out here though. So you can actually hear it and see it sudsing up after about 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and spray it all down.
really does just give us that nice finish without getting too crazy. Moving to the front of the car, I just can't leave this bumper tucked down like this. It looks so sad. We kind of got a droopy face. We definitely need to try to fix this. What I'm gonna probably do is take the whole thing off. I'm not sure yet, because I wouldn't mind going ahead and cleaning up this gravel pan and everything and getting it all buffed and waxed and everything. So it might be easier just to remove this entire bumper. So all we've got under here are these two big bolts and they're actually loose. So either somebody was messing with it or it loosened up and that's why it fell down below here. I did jack on it just a little bit and it's catching this gravel pan. So we at least need to take this side loose to kind of pull it out a bit. But if it's that easy to pull it off, let me grab the impact, let's zing it off real quick. front bumper is back on and although it is far from perfect it's way better than what it was biggest thing is that's what we have to work with so we had to make it work for now i will be on the hunt for another one to possibly replace that down the road that's a little bit nicer because that one's pretty crispy as crispy as it was i did soak it down steel wooled at first then we did the never dull we got it bolted back on here got it adjusted correctly and back into its place instead of hanging down funky and then we buffed it and waxed it and it's looking pretty good for what it was. We have most of the exterior dress at this point and the car's looking really sharp. I mean, this thing is, uh, I guess you call it black beauty. It, it, it's not perfect by any means, but it's a pretty slick car, even for a four door. Now, one thing that we want to address at this point, one of the last things that we really need to mess with, the GT wheels are pretty cool. They're 14 inch, four GT wheels they're not right for this car. We get those pulled off of there. We're gonna replace them with something else. Let me show you what we got. Now this feels really weird for me, taking some white walls and putting them on the inside. And that's because it's, I was kind of surprised how hard it is getting to find steelies. Most of the time, I think they kind of just get tossed for some slot mags or GT wheels or whatever, and you can't find anything. I ended up finding two random Ford 15 inches that was kind of one thing that I wanted with this car. This car would have originally come with 14s, but the Hypo version of this car, the two-door Hypo Starliner or Sunliner would have had 15s. That's kind of what I like. So we've got a pair of 15s. These are actually Chrysler 15 by six, same lug pattern and everything. They're gonna work great. As you can see, we've got a brand new set of 225, 75, 15s, which are gonna give us that kind of tall, but somewhat narrow hot rod look. I think it's gonna be right for this car. Those tires are just way too small. It kind of looks silly. This is gonna look good, but you'll notice the wheels are in really good shape other than some surface rust. So let's go ahead and scuff those down really quick. Let's get some paint on them. Let's get them nice and gloss black. And then we're gonna put some dog dish hubcaps to really give it that old school hot rod look. These wheels are in really good shape other than that little bit of surface rust. So all we really need to do is scotch bright them, scuff them in really good. And then we're gonna use some sp wheel specific gloss black paint and it should do really good. It should be a really stout, nice paint. Yeah. Now we can pull 
our needle valves. so we can install our deck of cars. Now I will be spraying this with the Duplicolor wheel, high performance wheel coating. I would prefer to have these powder coated but with kind of a time crunch that we have right now, I think for now we're gonna paint them later on. We can get them sandblasted and powder coated and I think it'll look even better. But I think this will look really nice. First thing, I'm going to spray in the back here, just where you can see through, because there's no point in wasting your paint going crazy, because you're not going to see any of this. It's so much better and I gotta say that paint did really well it laid in really nice looks really good we'll see if it's a good finish down the road but for the time being I'm really happy with it I did have just a couple little spots of over spray those will be easy to clean but that car trick seemed to work really well for what we were doing there those steelies look good the big black wall tires I think really suit the car and really give it that old school hot rod look and lastly here on the exterior it is nice and warm but we have good cloud cover Let's lay in our wax. We don't want to do it in direct sunlight because it kind of bakes onto the paint and makes it difficult, but you do want it to be nice and warm and the paint on this car. It's not scorching, but it is warm, so I think it'll be good. So we're just gonna lay this in nice, thick, and heavy and really coat everything down. Wax on, wax off. Let's knock that out. I think it'll be pretty sharp. And there you have it, first wash in at least 24 years. Obviously went a little bit farther with buffing and waxing it. We did wet sand some of the top panels. I think down near the, in the near future, we could kind of go through and this side's really nice. The other side does have some orange peel. We could do some more wet sanding, some more buffing and waxing and really dial this car in. But I'm really happy with, and I hope you all are too. I think that black, that old black lacquer paint just cleans up so nice if you spend the time on it and has made a huge difference on this car. There's a few things we still need to address in the exterior. I may go ahead and at least reshoot this section or the entire roof, which is just a small panel, so not a terrible deal. In the near future here, I'd like to find another bumper and, and kind of address a few things here and there. I think the wheels look really well on this car. I think it has that hot rod kind of old school muscle car sleeper look to it, especially being what it is really happy with that as well now, now looking from here you can see that headliner draping down and i think our next video before we finish the rest of running and driving is to work on this interior i did get a new carpet set i've got a new headliner we've got some new gaskets and stuff i think in our next video we're going to go ahead and do an interior restoration on this car get that interior cleaned up and dialed in i think this thing's really going to be set off and then from that point, we'll dial in the engine bay, we'll clean it up, we'll get the valve covers back on there, we'll get the new water pump in, build the brakes, take this thing for its first spin. 
But that will wrap it up for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed the cleanup, the rescue of this card at this point. If you haven't already and you do enjoy this kind of stuff, be sure to the subscribe button, notification bell. And if you have been a part of the channel, we really do incre incredibly appreciate it so much. It's what gives us the ability to do this kind of stuff, having all of you on with us. And like I said before, I had COVID. It kind of kicked my butt a little bit. I had made a post and so many of you had so many nice comments, checking in on us, keeping up with us. And it, thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate it. I feel like we're a car rescue family here, bringing these cars back to life together. And I just want to thank you all so much. But that's going to wrap it up. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side.